Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to WordCamp Miami. Oh, give me just a minute. I'm going to repeat that one more time for, for the video. I'm waiting for the signal. I got started a little, little anxious this morning to get going. All right, let's, let's wait a little bit. Give it a second. We're ready. Okay, once again, good morning, everyone. Welcome to WordCamp Miami. It's my... Excellent. It's an honor and privilege to kick this off this year at our freelance workshop. I know we have a mix of individuals here that, that do all kinds of different work. I'd like to just ask, for starters, how many people in this room are freelancing full-time right now? Keep your hands up. That means you don't get a W-2 form from anybody. You're freelancing full-time. And how many are freelancing part-time? Keep your hands up, everybody. I just want to see how many freelancers we have. So the rest of you that are in here are dreaming, right? You're dreaming about freelance. You're dreaming about success. You're dreaming about what you want to do. And success is a great place to start. We want to start with what is success? Success is different for everybody, right? To some people, it's about wealth. It's about prosperity. This is a symbol of success. To others, it's safety and security. It's money in the bank. To some, it's how many employees they have, how many office locations around the world. These are all different versions of success to different people. To some, it's the American dream. Put a white picket fence and a four-legged friend in this picture, and you've got the typical American dream. That's success. To me, success is not about getting emojis to work on my phone. It's actually about being happy. It's happiness. The late author and motivational speaker, Zig Ziglar, said there's three things that all people want in life. One is happiness, to be happy. Two is health, you want to feel good. And three is to be reasonably prosperous. Now, I know there's some of you in this room that want to be unreasonably prosperous, but that's a whole other topic in and of itself. We want to be reasonably prosperous because we need to have money. Money needs to be in the equation. We can't live without money. And taking that fact into account, we want to make sure that money is made. If you're not making money, you're doing a hobby. You're doing something that you love, and it's called a hobby. As soon as you're making money with that hobby, you're freelancing. So why do we freelance? What are the reasons that we choose to freelance? There's a lot of them. One of them, of course, to make money, right? Why give your money all to your boss if you can do it? You're doing the work. Might as well keep it for yourself. Another reason, to be the boss. It's one of the main reasons that people want. They say, oh, I want to be the boss. I want to sit at the top of the heap. That's why I freelance. Lifestyle. A lot of people freelance for lifestyle. And if you notice in this picture, a very realistic shot and the reason it's realistic is this, you can see how much work she's actually getting done sitting there on the beach with a pina colada. There's nothing happening on that screen. But the reality is if you do freelance, you do have the opportunity to travel. You can go with your friends or family somewhere, but chances are you'll be sitting in the hotel room working in the dark on your laptop while they're out on the beach. But lifestyle is one of the options and reasons that we freelance. And of course, balance. We're able to balance our work, our life, our family, our friends. We can easily balance that when we don't have an employer that's requiring us to drive to downtown Miami every morning up from Broward County. The reason I freelance? Freedom. Freedom. Freedom to do what I want, to work with who I want, and on what projects I want. Some of you may know William Wallace from the Braveheart movie. Uh, we do share a few traits, uh, hair not being one of them, but we both come from a common background. There's no royalty in our blood. My parents are Western European immigrants that came over in the 1960s. They've lived the American dream by working hard and being prudent with their finances. I don't have a computer science degree. I don't have a super high IQ. I'm average. I'm not in Mensa. I just had a desire to work independently for myself from a very young age. 
And it took a while to get there, but that's what I've always wanted to do, and now I'm doing that. In order to tell this story, I've got to go back a little bit to before I was such a geek. Today I spend my days 8 to 10 hours on the computer. I'm working in WordPress all day long, working in different project management systems, CRM systems, but I wasn't always such a geek. Long time ago, I used to hang out with the cool kids. And I know I was a cool kid because I'm the one right there with that badass Darth Vader iron-on t-shirt. In Florida, wearing a black t-shirt that's a plastic iron-on, nice and sweaty. But apparently in the 1980s, when short shorts and tube socks were all the rage, I was fortunate enough to have parents that had the foresight to see that the personal computer was going to revolutionize the world. And they, luckily for my brother and I, bought an Atari 800 computer. This bad boy had 48 kilobytes of RAM, no internal storage, and 256 colors, I think. So that's, that's where my passion started. Uh, some of you in this room may have met my brother. He comes to word camps here and there, Orlando. He's been to this one several years. He's not here today, fortunately. So uh, please don't tell him that I've used this picture. Uh, that's my older brother in the front on the keyboard, and that was me. Uh, what I thought was taking lots of notes. Uh, he was programming. I remember him programming a, a parser in Atari Basic way back then. Um, I, later, I looked at this picture a little more closely. Lower the lights, sure. Oh, okay. Oh. Do, do, I, do, I need to go, do I need to go back to the short shorts and uh, tube socks? All right, sorry about that. There, there we go. All right. So, and there's my Darth Vader t-shirt, just so you know. So this is, this is us in our room getting started. And I thought that I was taking notes in this picture, but upon further inspection, I realized that, no, I was actually holding a joystick. So I was most likely playing a game, maybe something he'd created to move a cursor around and change the colors, something very simple and basic. But this is where the, the passion for computing started for me many years ago in the mid-'80s at some point. And what happened was shortly thereafter, I lost interest in computers. And I wasn't really sure what happened, but I just fell out of it. I, I found interest in other things. And as I got older, I realized doctors had a medical term for this. They called it puberty. And then I realized, oh, there was no interest in computers. I had interest in something else. It took a while for me to get back in. And it wasn't until after I'd graduated college, I had a degree in business from FAU, and I was working for Lennar Holmes full time as a manager, wearing a suit and tie to work every day, and hated it. I had a great title, lousy salary, nice office, lousy salary, and I got the Wall Street Journal delivered to my desk every morning. And I was reading about, I say kids, but they were just other people younger than I was making millions during that first internet boom in the late 90s, mid and late 90s. And I thought, why did I miss this? What happened? I used to love computing. I used to love working with computers, the technology. So I took it upon myself while working full time to learn HTML, to learn Photoshop, and to start learning about databases and connecting to databases online through what was ASP at the time, it was Microsoft's language, uh, active server pages. And I got started doing that. And within a few years, I was able to rip off my tie, tell my boss to take a hike, and go out and start working for an agency. For several years, I worked for a few different agencies and startups, moved around, jumped around a little bit, learning the ropes. And in 2004, I started my own company, South Florida Web Studio. I started this company myself and two contractors. So we were all freelancing. What happened was in 2004, there was a real estate bubble. Right? If we can all remember back then, real estate was booming, and our business was booming as well. And we went in two years from myself and two contractors to seven employees. So we'd moved offices, we added servers, we added equipment, 
It was just gangbusters, nonstop. Very exciting, very fun. And then 2007, at the spring of 2007, I lost 80% of my business in about 60 days. It just stopped. We, we had a lot of real estate clients, and they just all pulled the plug at the same time. They saw what was happening. They knew a little bit before the rest of the economy in 2008. So in 2007, they stopped doing their marketing. They, they just pulled the plug on all the services. And it took us a while to adjust. We had to downsize. We had to move things around. And by 2010, 2011, I was freelancing alone. And I was working with contractors. And I've been doing that ever since. And I can tell you right now, I actually make more money. I have more freedom and more happiness in my life freelancing and working with contractors. I can work on bigger projects, and I can work on the projects that I want to work on. So how do we get started freelancing? How do we move from that, that passion that we love, that hobby that we really want to do? We've got to have a plan. We start off with a plan, and then we can't just have a plan and sit on it. We actually have to take action. Periodically, we need to evaluate that action, that plan, and see, OK, how are we doing? Are we, are we living up to the plan that we've established? And then repeat, repeat that process. And if you're just freelancing part time on the side, it's good to look and know, well, how much do I need to actually make doing this in order to quit my day job and do this full time? So that's why you do that evaluation process. Today, we're going to talk about three sections in, of freelancing. Before you begin, what you need to do, getting started and moving forward. I'm going to touch on all these topics. And the rest of the speakers, we have nine other great speakers talking today. They're going to elaborate on these areas as well and tell their own stories. So before you begin, you need to have a plan. At the very least, you need to know your customers, the service or product that you're offering your customers, estimate your revenue, and estimate your expenses. That is a bare minimum. Don't just jump into freelancing and say, oh, you know what? I can do some social media for you. I'll charge you $300, and we'll, we'll get started. Have, have a plan. Know what it's going to take, what it's going to cost, what, what you're going to need to buy. Uh, the links that are down here are kind of long, so I just link them into my slideshow. They will be available on my website and on uh, SlideShare, as well as, I think, WordCamp TV. So uh, you'll have access to these these resources as well. Top 10 business plan resources for free. It's a great uh, resource from Inc. Magazine. Uh, one of them is the, is the $100 startup. They have a one page that just lists quick items to put in about your customers, your service, your revenue, and your expenses. Obviously, you can elaborate on that much more and get very detailed into your business plan, knowing your customers, knowing your market, uh, having pro forma statements. But this is basics to get started. Live Plan is, a, is online software that lets you do basically the same thing. The next thing, protect yourself. Before you begin, you want to make sure you incorporate. In Florida, sunbiz.org is the place to do that. Incorporate, do an LLC, an S Corp. Do something so that you're not liable. If something should happen to your business and you, in the, in the bad chance that get sued by someone, they can't come in, they can't take your assets, your house, if you're an S Corp. Make sure your accounting is in place. Have an accountant. Sometimes your accountant can do the incorporation for you if you have one that, that will do that. Most of them will. We use QuickBooks Online. I'm not a big fan of Intuit, but I've been using them for years. So I use QuickBooks Online. I do my own bookkeeping. I like to know how we're doing as a business, and I like to look at it periodically. If you choose to use a bookkeeper, that's great, but understand that you should know what a profit and loss statement is. You should be able to look at your balance sheet, know where you are, look at your income statements, know some of these basics. And I believe Frank Corso will be talking about taxes and accounting later, so he'll get into that a lot more detail. Use written contracts. You want to make sure that you always use written contracts. That protects yourself. It, it lets, it's, it's not that a handshake and a smile is no good. That's a great way to start your relationship. But a written contract details what you're going to offer and give to your customer and what you expect in return. I've been in business for 11 years. I've worked with some clients for 11 years. I still provide written contracts. There can be times where we think a, a job is going to take a month, and for some reason unknown, it, it takes six months. Now all of a sudden, we look back and we 
oh, do you remember that conversation we had? No, I don't remember it, but I can look back in the contract and see, oh, this is what we said we were going to do. And retain an attorney. Have your attorney review your contracts. If you're using a template, if you use the same contract for every job, that's great. Have your attorney review that. Make sure that it's solid and you're covered. And it's also good to have an attorney available when you need them, if you need them. Here's a couple more resources. Like I said, sunbiz.org, um, QuickBooks Online, and 10 web design contract templates. That's from Mashable. It's a great place to start with your contracts and then move forward from there. Once you get started, one of the first things, you want to get paid. Make sure you have separate bank accounts. You don't want to be putting your income directly into your personal account. The IRS doesn't like that, and your accountant won't like that. So just have a separate bank account set up. Accept credit cards. It's 2016. Make sure that you're able to accept credit cards. I'm guilty of this myself. I don't like to pay 3% just for processing a payment. But ultimately, the administrative tasks and headaches that you go through with checks and collections and all of that can be alleviated uh, mostly by accepting credit cards. And use an invoice system. I still have contractors. Some of them may be in this room that I work with that send me Microsoft Word templated invoices. There are services like FreshBooks and Harvest that set up the invoices for you. They track them. They'll follow up on them. They even let you pay through them. Stripe and PayPal, are, of course, are, are ways to accept credit cards, but FreshBooks, FreshBooks and Harvest are invoicing systems that also allow you to accept credit cards through them. As you're getting started, you want to track your time. You're a service business. You need to track your time. You want to make sure that you're always uh, aware of what you're worth. Even if you're billing by the project, you want to know how long, it's, how long you're spending doing that. Uh, Mark, and I can't remember his last name, uh, he's from Server Press. He's going to be speaking later on today about uh, how to make profits and not just more work for yourself. And I'm sure he's going to be talking about time tracking in that presentation. Time tracking is important when you're freelancing. Many times it can go be feast or famine. And recurring revenue is a great way to uh, flatten those bumps in the road. Georgina Lewis will explain how to go about creating recurring revenue streams uh, later on today as well. We use an internal system for time tracking, one that we've used for many years. We use Basecamp for project management, but there are third-party tools that allow you to do time tracking within Basecamp. Harvest and FreshBooks that I mentioned earlier also have timers. I know if you're, if you're a designer in here, you probably say, time tracking inhibits my creativity. Well, there's little start and stop timers. Just turn them on, forget about them, let them run, be as creative as you want. Hopefully, you'll remember to come back and shut it off. As you're getting started, you need to make sure you're marketing and networking. It's one thing you do not want to forget. Establish your brand. Karen Dimmick will be talking later today about establishing your brand for your freelance. You need to create a marketing strategy. Don't just take $500 and throw it into AdWords or Facebook ads and see what happens. Have a strategy in place. If you are not comfortable doing that because you're more comfortable coding JavaScript, well, I'm sure there's people in this room. How many people in this room do marketing? See, roll your hands. Find someone who does marketing. They'll create a strategy for you and stick with it. Always be networking. Okay, if you're going to go out and freelance on yourself, you need to understand the value and importance of personal referrals. Our best clients come from personal referrals. I learned this through the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce in 2007 when we lost our business and it diminished severely. I joined the chamber thinking I need to do something. And what I really learned from there was when you go to a networking event, sometimes you see your friends there. And it's great to go over and say hi to them, but if you're really there to network, go to the people that you don't know. At lunch today, sit at a table of people that you don't know so that you can introduce yourself to them. Let them know what you do and find out what they do. That's networking. And keep your business cards with you all the time. Moving forward, client relation. Is the client always right? No. That's client's wrong. Uh, I don't want to say the client's wrong. Customer is not always right. The market is always right. There are problem clients. And I can tell you that client relations are so important 
that we have four speakers today that are going to be speaking about different aspects of managing expectations and client relations. We've got David Yard, Mindy Postoff, Adam Susi, and Steve Zenga that are all going to be speaking in some shape or form about client relations or expectations. Managing and exceeding expectations is huge. When you exceed your client's expectations and give them more than they ask for, you build loyalty, you build trust. Steve Jobs was famous for doing this. At every presentation, he always had a little something more. He always gave the crowd a little something more and made them fanatical. Nordstrom's retailers is known for this as well. You can return an item over a year after you've purchased it, even if you didn't purchase it from their store. So make sure you can exceed your client's expectations. Lastly, being the boss. You think you fired your boss, right? You're out on your own, but you're always going to have a boss. The difference is now you have multiple bosses. And the good part about that is that it's much easier to get rid of one of those, one of those customers and clients, and replace them with another. It's much easier to do that than to replace your full-time employer with a whole new job. And later on today, Luis Treadwell will be talking about getting rid of those pesky problem clients and avoiding them in the first place. Owning your own company or freelancing is fun and exciting. It's exhilarating to be your own boss and call the shots. However, it can be lonely at the top. You are responsible for everything. The buck stops here. If you're not comfortable with that, maybe freelancing isn't for you. You need to manage your own time. You need to know when you need to be networking, when you need to be marketing, when you need to be collecting, when you need to be doing your accounting, and when you need to be working as well. As I said before, it can be lonely at the top. If you're sitting in your house working from a home office, you may spend the day, as I did, for about two years talking to clients and customers. And that's all I talked to, and then my two-year-old. And you need to get out. You need to find peers, people that you can bounce ideas off of. Co-working spaces are great for that. It helps you to find balance. Uh, access space is my home. It's in Fort Lauderdale on Andrews and Las Olas. Fantastic co-working space. There are co-working spaces in just about every major city. I know Miami, Wynwood has the lab. You've got pipeline downtown. We work on the beach. There are co-working spaces in every community. Look them up and check them out. They'll give you a free day or two to, to try them out. Again, just to reiterate, hobby to freelance, you need to have a plan, take action, evaluate, and repeat. Failure is fine. Sometimes it's even praised. What failure means is that you did something. You made an attempt. You got off your butt and actually tried something. OK, it didn't work out. Learn from your mistake and try it again. It's OK. You just have to keep continue trying until you succeed. Having a plan will help you in that success, and that's why it's the first item on my list. Remember to go for whole life success, not just business or finances. Be wary of the high price of putting too much focus on any single aspect of your life in exclusion of everything else. Go for balance in all aspects of your life that are important to you, and you can take your hobby and move it to freelance and eventually full time. My slides will be up on this link shortly, within about an hour. They'll also be at soflaweb.com and on WordCamp TV. Thank you. I believe we have a short break, and then uh, we're going to have Ben Stafo Rosales come talk to us about pricing strategies and getting paid. Short break will be about five minutes, so it's very short. To answer any questions. I will be here all weekend if you see me. If you see my brother, stay away from him. But if you see, if you see me, feel free to ask me any questions.